What's going on YouTube? I'm back with uh, my cheat engine series here. This is part two or the first actual going through a game and finding some stuff. The previous part I talked about the basic setup of cheat engine, downloading it, installing it without all the crap that comes uh, bundled with it. So watch that if you haven't yet, <clears throat> if you are completely unfamiliar with Cheat Engine. But now we are going to go into actually finding health. That's the first thing that we're going to do, since that seems to be a pretty common thing to want to uh, tweak or modify or whatever. So I'm actually going to use an emulator with some ROMs to do these next two, three, maybe four videos or so. Um, that'll serve two purposes. One, I've seen a lot of questions about how to use Cheat Engine with emulators. And two, it's just a simple way to load up some games to show how to find some stuff. All right, so I have FCE UX. It's a Nintendo emulator. I've got that going. Um, once again, I mentioned this in the previous video, but sometimes when you mess with emulators, you need to go into your settings and you need to modify your scan settings here and check this one. I already have it checked, but by default it's unchecked. <clears throat> it can take longer to do scans. So um, this looks in the memory that's used by emulators and stuff like that. Not all of them have their own built-in memory, uh, but I just always keep it checked when I'm doing anything with emulators. So you might want to start with that. All right, so we are going to start with Mega Man, Mega Man 2 specifically. And this is good because I've had a couple of weird things happen with Mega Man before when I've done, when I've scanned for stuff. So basically, um, I'm going to try to run into some issues and show you guys how to work through them because a lot of Cheat Engine is just going through trying stuff, messing up, seeing what happens, you know, and fumbling about. You'll basically be dealing with the same kind of principles, but sometimes they won't work. Um, so I'm going to try to flesh out as much as I can in these videos to um, give you some solid ground. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start here. And let's see who's an easy guy. I guess we could do uh, Woodman. He's easy enough. And what I like to do in any game is wait until the first level loads where my character's in there and my health is definitely populated. So there I've got health and there's Mega Man. Alright, so... Basically, when you start off with Cheat Engine and you want to find something that you have no idea what it is, okay, you are going to be searching for an unknown value. Okay? That's pretty obvious. You do not know what the value is, so you are searching for an unknown value, all right? So we know it's health that we're looking for, but we have no idea <clears throat> what the representation for health is in the game. So let's go ahead and attach. Let's find FCE UX here, and let's open it, all right? So now we've got Cheat Engine attached to FCE UX. All right. Now, because we don't know the initial value that we are looking for, all right. See here where it says scan type. You want to select unknown initial value, and then hit first scan. All right. Now, basically everything to do with FCE UX that's going around or that's going on in memory right now. This is pulled up values for everything as it is right now so out of these 12 million or 12.5 million almost uh, results that it found one of those has to do with our health so basically we're going to be whittling down these results to find what's going to be our health okay so the way that we can do that is start having things happen to our health take away health add health every time we have a change we can scan for that type of change that happens alright so going back to scan types over here this is what you're going to be using a lot alright so there's different ways you can get to values okay 
So, what we're going to try to do now is lose health. And when we do that, we're going to do a scan for decreased value, okay? Because we know that whatever our health is right now, once we lose health, that value will have gone down. It will have decreased, okay? So, that's where you'll select decreased value. Um, and then we'll do next scan. And what that'll do is out of all these results right here, every value out of this that dropped or went down, that's what it'll pair these results down to. All right, so let's go ahead and lose some health. All right, so now we already selected decreased value. We're going to do next scan. All right, that whittled down our results significantly. All right. But we still want to whittle it down more. One of these values in here is our health. So you can either lose more health or you could try to gain more health. If you tried to gain health, you would search for an increased value after you gain the health because your health goes back up. It increases. Okay. So we know that whatever value is over here, that would have gone up. Okay. But we're going to try to lose health. So we're going to go decreased value. There's more health gone. All right, so because our value decreased again, now we can do next scan. All right. Okay, you see how all these values over here are shifting around? This is another good point that will come in handy for you with other things. All these values that are changing right now, we know our health is not changing. Our health is staying exactly the same. All these values, whatever they are in the game, who knows what they are, okay? We just know that none of these are our health because they're sitting here fluctuating right now. What you can do is from the drop box here, you can select unchanged value. All right. And then hit next scan. And what that's going to do is all these results that are changing right now, they're going to go away because we're scanning for values that have not changed. We're scanning for an unchanged value. So since the last time we lost health and we did our scan, we haven't lost any more health, we haven't gained any more health, the health value remains unchanged. So by doing next scan now with unchanged value, it's going to take away a bunch of these fluctuating numbers that we know have nothing to do with our health. All right, so here we've got more going on now. All right, our results are getting really whittled down, but we want it down to like the handful of possible results, okay? So, because we've got a bunch of stuff changing still, we can go next scan again with unchanged value because our health still has not changed, but all this stuff here is sitting here changing. All right, so we can try it again, try it again. All right, and what you can do with the unchanged value thing is you can go into the game, start playing around and doing stuff, right? As long as your value, your health doesn't change, you're okay. So. We just moved around and did some stuff in the game which might have changed more stuff out of these results. But because our health hasn't changed, we're going to still search for unchanged value. So we'll do next scan. Boom, 709. That's getting a lot better. Okay. Now, I can tell you now, you can't necessarily count out these huge numbers because, you know, depending on your value type that you have set, um, which I'll go into later, probably in the next video or maybe at the end of this one. Um, you can get some really funky stuff that might actually represent your health and it doesn't seem obvious. <clears throat> Alright, so let's try unchanged value again. Okay, let's uh, try to gain some health. Alright, our health is still the same. We can do another scan. Alright, boom, we're down to 192 now. That's good. So let's uh, go for a decreased value again. Boom. So our health went down, decreased value. Next scan. All right, this is looking pretty good. We're down to eight, and we have all these zeros, which most likely have nothing to do with our health. We have these two large numbers here, which could possibly have something to do with our health. But I'm thinking it's the 16. It looks close enough to here. So you look at this number, and you say, you know, what could that 16 represent? could represent the number of ticks that we see right here, right? So let's try to count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's looking pretty good, all right? 
So if you double click this, okay, you can either double click on here, which will drop it down into here, or when it's selected right here, you can click this little red arrow, which will drop it down to here, or you can right click on it and say, add selected address to the address list. All of those things will bring whatever you have selected down to here, all right? So now we have this down here. What you can do is change the value to, I don't know, 20, see if your health goes up, which sometimes you'll have to leave the screen that your health is on and then come back to it so that the screen will refresh and accurately show what we changed in memory. Because not always will the screen update real time. It needs to have a reason to show on the screen that it's been affected by something in the game. So in other words, if we change the health here, it might not necessarily change on the screen because it waits for either getting hit by an enemy or getting health, and then it's got a reason to display a change or something. So, um, anyway, one thing that I like to do uh, initially is just sometimes I won't even count out that 16. You know, if I think a number looks like it might represent the health or something, I bring it down real quick and then I put the X in this box, which you just click there. And what that'll do is lock this value at 16, which means it will not change. Which means if we get hit, or if we gain health, this value will not change. We won't get our health, we won't lose health from hits. So that's what this does, okay? It keeps the value locked at what it is. So let's try that, and let's get hit and see what happens. Alright, so watch the health up there. Boom, see how it dropped down and went right back up? So that's looking like our health. So right now we pretty much have infinite health in Mega Man. Okay. So let me see if I can get a uh, one of those white things to see if to show you what it looks like whenever you try to get health. All right, see that? Boom. Tries to go up, can't. The value's locked. All right. So we have another one here. I'm gonna un tick this and go back in the game and I want to see how high the health goes with this. Alright, it almost took it to the top. Alright, so see it's 26 now. 26. It looks like we're about two ticks away maybe. So the high health, the high for your health is 28, which seems odd. I thought it might have been 30, but it doesn't look like it is. Um, and the reason that's important is because sometimes if you change your health to higher than what it is, you'll have buggy stuff happen in the game. Um, so let's go ahead and change this to 28 and see what happens in the game whenever we do that. Boom. It automatically showed the change without me needing to leave the screen and come back or get hit or anything. So it looks like 28 is the max value for health in Mega Man. All right. So... Now you could basically just lock the value in Cheat Engine, start running through the game, not worry about shooting anything, not worry about getting hit, infinite health, right? So that's just a quick way to show you how to find health, all right? How to pare down your results to find what your health is going to be. So that same process, though, is what you will use for a, a ton of other stuff that you want to find in games, okay? So like right now we just started Mega Man, so I don't have anything that's using energy. Um, so basically whenever you get something that uses energy, it, it creates a thing just like the health looks like there, you know? The energy runs down as you use your whatever weapon, you know? <clears throat> and to find that, we would basically go through the same process. Um, you start with your full energy, or it doesn't matter where your energy is. Let's say it's three quarters of the way used, or you know what? Forget energy. Let's go. Let's go to health again, just to keep it consistent. I'm going to uncheck this value. Go back to the game. Get hit. Boom! I lost health. All right. Let's say your health is right here, and you thought. Ah, you know, like, crap, I meant to attach Cheat Engine before I lost health, or before this, or before that, or whatever, right? Even if you are right here at this, okay? Do new scan. Okay, uh, let's just say you've lost this health, and you just attached Cheat Engine, and you're like, okay, I want to find health now. You can still 
do exactly what we did. From this point, it's an unknown value to us, right? So then you would start with unknown initial value, first scan. It scans the game exactly as it is right now. So then you could run through the same process again. Lose a little more health or gain health. If you lose health, do a decreased value next scan once you lose the health. If you gain health, do increased value for your next scan, okay? So that's basically a quick way to show you how to find health. And in the next video, I'm going to run through some stuff and show you why this isn't always um, a foolproof thing um, and some of the issues that you can run into and some things you need to change, okay? So um, I'll be back shortly with that next video. And uh, yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. Let me know some thoughts. If you have any questions, be glad to help out. See you in the next video.